Hello, I'm Shikan and welcome to my beat list. I normally make beats in my bedroom. I did have a studio in Sheffield. It's always good to you know have a place where you can play tunes as loudly as you want and you know just concentrate on that. But there is something about bedroom producing where you can you can just get at it at any time. You know as soon as I want. Okay, we'll count you in. Ready? Mm -hmm. Three, two, one. And you're in. Uh, yeah, so I'm using Logic. Got like um, my MPC regions at the top, which are just uh, a kind of guide for swing, which you'll recognise in like, most garage music. Putting things a bit offbeat. I always just start, I like to start with a kick. Uh, for this tune, just 4 4, keeping it pretty simple. Yeah, after that, I like to start building the drums around it, so just searching for a hi-hat. Um, my files are all kind of all over the place, so I should probably organise them. I would advise that, you know, sort into banks of hats and claps or whatever. Okay, so drop it in the sample and then, yeah, copy and paste it like a hat on every offbeat as you would, you know, standard garage house music. The, um, I beef that up with a, another hat, which is this. And this is in a, a sampler called EXS24. I've got two hats, putting them both together, rather than just having one sitting on its own, gives it a bit more, a bit more weight. And then what I like to do with another hat is, so like I'm doing here, put some delay on, and just just to fill it out a bit. Uh, some of the influences that I've had from a more kind of a modern perspective, like people like DJQ, uh, Toddler T, all make kind of Upfront music, um, it's, you know, stuff that go off on a party, in a party, especially up north, it's that kind of influence. Seven and a half minutes. That's a little um, hi-hat loop. I tend not to use loops too much. I'll just stick a clack in. And then what I'm doing now is just um, side chaining it, the hats against the kick. So when the kick comes in, as you can see on that compressor, it'll make the hat stuck out a bit. So they're less prominent and they only come in when I want them to. So it's just making them a bit more background, as it were. And I've got a clap in there, so the, the drums themselves are starting to come together. Then it's time to stick some, some other stuff, as is kind of a custom with genres like speed garage and such. I, I do like to stick horns and sirens and lasers and such. <laughs> I'd describe this as speed garage more over baseline. Te joy, uh, BPM wise, baseline tends to be 140. This one is 134, which is still relatively quick for the speed garage that I like to make, but I wouldn't call it baseline so much. I think like the, the drum patterns and stuff is more fitting to um, what you describe as speed garage, but it is kind of. Uh, perhaps in the middle of those kind of genre divides. Um, again, 
that's just files of stuff, lasers and sound, all this stuff. You need. It's good to just have as much as you can, I think, so when it comes to accessing it, you've got all kind of things. Another kind of popular thing in speed garage is like, it's got the kind of jungle ragger influences, you know, you'll find it in a lot of, lot of that kind of stuff, so it's, you know, dropping that in again. Um, just to, again, give it some more interest, it's just like little points. Doubled up the drums, made it. Can't see where it's gone to, but I think four bars. You know, starting to give this song some structure. I do like to start with a uh, two bar loop just to start with drums and then fill it out. And what I'm doing now, I've just got a um, bass preset that this is one I made earlier, as it were. I've got quite, you know, as I have made them, it's good to come round, save them again, edit them a bit. Uh, this is done on Albino, this particular one I use. A few different synths, but I think for this kind of song, this preset that I've got is pretty, pretty fitting. And that's the kind of speed garage warble, as it were. It's like a slow, it opens pretty slowly, and then you can change the cutoff to give it some more kind of whap, as it were. And yeah, just trying to come up with a, a simple riff, nothing too complicated for this one, just bashing out 10 minutes and all. So you can see it starts to come together somewhat, so that's just um, capturing what I've just played, uh, quantizing it just to make sure everything's on the note. That one, for instance, is just a bit behind. And then um, with basses, what I always tend to do is um, stick a, a sub underneath just to give it some weight. I look like on that one, I've EQ'd it up so there's a bit of a, uh, a low cut off rather than, you know, and having a sub makes it just a bit clearer and gives it some more bass. I give it just a bit of attack and release so it's not just right on the nose, it gives it a bit more character. <laughs> What I'll do next is um, just to give it some kind of musical points. This is uh, a Corgan one, which is like a piano organ um, plug in. It's pretty good. But, um, for these purposes, I'm not going to fiddle too much. I'm just going to pick a preset. Size that again to make sure it's on the note. Having the midis different lengths as well as you play it gives it a bit more of a, a realistic touch rather than just having the same over and over again. And then just to give this a bit more a bit more character, stick a bit of reverb on it. This is a, a waves plugin called Truver, which is pretty good. Take the drums further, just more structure in life, start to try and bring it together. Just take the bases over there for a quick drop. How long we got? This starts to become the intro, and then as a quick drop, I'm just taking out the um, the kick drum, well, all the drums, it'd be on here, just to give it some uh, a bit of a drop before it, it comes in all properly. This is another sort of ragged sample. And then another feature you'll find quite a lot in this kind of music is uh, kind of repeated vocals. I took that sample, I made it, um, I think a beat long, I'm not sure, I can't really see, but, uh, and then just looped it, so that's just going to repeat, and then I'm putting those all together, so it's just one thing. And then this is just a fade in, so that's volume. That's what's coming in. That, um, so as that comes in, it gradually gets louder, according to the white line going up. And finally, 
just to um, finish it off, stick a, a Graves L2 on, <laughs> just to give it a bit of a master, a high-res uh, CD master, just so it isn't, uh, doesn't redline, it sounds, it comes out pretty loud. A very quick and uh, not very scientific way of mastering, then bring everything down so it's not brushing too hard. Now we have it, a basic and very quick tune. Compared to making a beat normally, um, beat this was pretty hard. Ten minutes um, seems to fly by. I'm not so one who makes a tune too quickly. So yeah, every minute counts. Sometimes when uh, you want your computer to be really fast, it often can't. But no, it was fun. It was good to just bash a tune out, see what I could make in ten minutes. There's nothing, you know, a pretty good kind of process. I think like to try and do something in ten minutes. Make sure you don't dilly dally too much. That is that.